I'll warn you right now. My uh, personal joy. And actually, you were probably the reason why. Come in for a um, my, my demo's broken, so, but I recorded it, so you can see what, I, what I'm talking about. Um, so, what is black box testing? Um, this is <laughs> testing you all are probably familiar with, but you probably don't even know it. Um, this is things like, uh, iteration test guys. Um, this is where you throw attacks at that system and see what comes out. So, um, I, I like to use the analogy of, of trying to figure out how a digestive system works based on what's coming out of it. Um, so, so it's bad because there's no indication of why a test is failed. Um, you, can, you can be close to the vulnerability, but not even know. You might be a semicolon or a mark off, and you wouldn't have any idea. Um, compare that with white box testing. This is things like code review or uh, design review. Um, this is good because it gives the consultant all the information about the system, but it's bad because it kind of overwhelms the consultant with information. And it's hard to hypothesize things that work on the network layer, or the platform layer, or the application layer. Um, I, I use the analogy of trying to figure out how a digestive system works based on looking at the picture. So you can look at a diagram, but it's not going to tell you if there's a vulnerability or if the system's broken somewhere. Um, so wouldn't it be cool? I had the idea when I was thinking of submitting to the talk. Um, <laughs> there's a way to show <laughs> the inner workings of the code. Um, so you can kind of Excuse see me, sorry about the transform kicking into a system. You can process real input like uh, black box testing, um, but you can see how it works <laughs> in the actual system like white box testing. This would allow you uh, this, this is a really, really huge benefit for penetration testers. Wow. Um, so I, I set out to develop something similar to this, and I, I kind of came up. Um, so the recipe I came up with, I started with the lamp stack. Um, I chose something, I chose a thing called uh, Bitnami. Um, they have kind of cookie cutter pre-made pre lamp stacks. It was good because it saved me a lot of time setting everything up. It was bad because it's not working right now. Um, also, also it had uh, kind of settings and stuff tucked away in weird places, um, so it kind of took some getting used to. Um, then I used Xdebug um, specifically because I wanted to target WordPress and PHP. Um, and you put those all together, and hopefully you get <laughs> some ownage. <laughs> um, so here's the part where I have a live demo. That's not gonna work. I did Windows updates right before I came. So, but hey, you guys, actually, this my talk's kind of boring, but this was the most boring part. <laughs> So you guys got off really easy. What it's going to show is me digging through some trace files. Luckily, I have a backup plan. I took some videos of, of the attack. Um, so this is me starting the virtual machine here. Um, and I, I have it kind of in fast motion because with, with Xdebug working, it, it slows everything way down. And then on the bottom left here, I'm going to putty into it. Um, the... Uh, Yeah. Okay, so I'm logging in. Um, on the right is my WordPress uh, website, super secure WordPress <laughs> website. On the left, I'm showing the trace files as they grow. Um, you can see how much data it's saving. It's logging every function call and every variable. So it's already 64 megs of pure text. So that's, that's huge if you've ever looked at 64 megs of text. Um, when it stops growing, that means the, the page is, that, that function is done, so I save that. Um, I'm going to the vulnerable, uh, what I suspect to be a vulnerable uh, plugin. It's called the testimonial plugin, and that's growing, growing, growing. Um, I, I kind of, I started at the most popular <coughs> test, uh, plugins and kind of worked my way to the bottom, and I got pretty far down before I found something. So this is really low hanging fruit. I'm not going to give you a lot of information about the plugin itself um, because I, I haven't talked to the author. Um, it's, it's, I, I looked at it's a commercial plugin. There's only been 50 downloads, so it's nothing spectacular. Um, I don't want to like keep it up. Here I'm throwing a SQL injection attack at it, um, and I'm hoping this will work. If that works, it's going to replace this default category with the admin password. 
Um, really? And it's right there, it just derped out, and we have no idea why. <laughs> um, this is the part in the talk where I dig through a trace file and show you, tracing it through, why, um, why it derped out. It turns out that it doesn't like um, quotation marks. Um, and I, I wouldn't have known that without looking, looking through some trace, trace logs. Um, so this is the working, this is me throwing an attack at it without any quotation marks. So it's pretty much the same attack, but instead of using the word admin with quotation marks around it, I'm using uh, something called the, the, the care function or the, the char function, and I use the, the ASCII values of admin. Um, so, let's see. So I'm using union select, user login, and a password. And instead of using quotation marks, <coughs> I'm using the ASCII for A-D-M-I-N. And if it works, we will have a password. Mm. Boom! Right there. <laughs> it's nice. actually a password hash. Password. Um, but I mean, with the password hash, you can do stuff like rainbow tables or uh, brute force it or whatever. Um, so that was kind of lame, sorry. <laughs> um, so, what did I learn? Um, the good takeaways is uh, Xdebug, you can turn up the logging way super high so you can log every function and variable. Um, so, there's really good coverage. Um, it has an API which could potentially plug into other uh, tools. And it worked. Um, that vulnerability I might have missed because um, it was just a quotation mark. I could have uh, thrown, you know, two dozen attacks at it or two thousand attacks at it and missed it. Um, I was able to find a, a, an un undiscovered vulnerability in a plugin and a commercial plugin for WordPress. Boom. Um, so what's the bad takeaways? Um, because it can be configured to log every function. And variable, um, it, it has a lot of data, so the signal to noise ratio is really low. This made for huge trace files. Um, one, I, I logged into the, the VM one time and it was a gigabyte of trace files, so it, it, and that's just text. So, a gigabyte of text. And it slows the application way down. It took me about 15 minutes just to do those three little functions. And Xdebug kind of sucks and is buggy. The documentation for the API is sparse and weird. Um, so what's future possibilities? Um, if you all are familiar with Burp Suite, um, I hope to maybe plug in an a API call from that to uh, Xdebug's API. I think it would be really cool to throw attacks directly from there and watch it trace through. Um, maybe some sort of automatic flagging that sees if input changes. So when they do uh, remove quotation marks or add slashes or whatever, um, it'll flag that. And it doesn't have to be limited to Xdebug. There's lots of tracing options out there um, for different programming languages. Um, so I can make the VMware, I can fix the VMware and make it available to anyone if you're interested. So hit me up. My name is Matt. Thank you very much.